Good day, fellow investors. Uh, there has been a lot of commotion regarding Facebook because the stock is going down, has been going down, but okay, I don't think a lot of the fundamentals changed. And as I said, I will cover this stock uh, publicly on YouTube. I am long this stock and with me today is again, Yao Kai that I think you know from previous videos on Micron and AMD. Hi, Yao Kai. Hi, fellow investors. Uh, see, Sven has beaten some format into me. <laughs> Thank you, Yao Kai. And so I'll give, me, I'll give you again my story, what I think about the new regulatory environment, just quickly, as we have al already discussed that. And then Yao Kai is going to add something about the programmers, the employees in Facebook, as he is living there in California, and also about the corporate culture, which is a pretty tech things and how it is data driven, which will give you a different insight on Facebook that I'm sure you didn't get anywhere else. So let me start with just quickly my part of the story, just the fundamentals, and then we'll switch to Yao Kai. So Facebook, a big company that I think has a great moat and has a price earnings ratio of 20.78 forward price earnings ratio, even lower. It is printing cash. They are starting to do buyback. So everything looks like, okay, this is starting to become a great business that rewards shareholders. Plus what I think it's a large moat, the number of daily active users is 1.5 billion, 2 billion people, monthly active users. When we talk about users and Facebook, we mean the whole ecosystem, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, VR, everything that they are doing. We don't even know what will be the VR, what are the possibilities for monetization, Instagram shopping, whatever that might happen in the future. Further, if we just quickly take a look at the balance sheet, Yaokai, what do you think about their inventory? Non-existent. So that's another showing of how a great business is. They have no inventory, no issues with that. So revenue has been constantly going up. We'll talk more about late at the end of the video about the risks and about the revenue and what might happen there. But my core thinking about Facebook is that the ad is underpriced there. If you want to put an ad in a Dutch magazine, fashion magazine, it costs 10,000 euro and maybe 30,000 people will see it. The same thing on Facebook will cost you 300 euro or $300. So when Madison Avenue gets it that it's so underpriced or they are forced from a recession, we might see these revenue numbers easily quadruple over the next, next five to 10 years, years if Facebook stays normal. So that's one. And then Average revenue per user should explode. We are very, very differentiated across the globe. At some point in time, it should all, all go up. The concerns on privacy, which such big, big companies, there are always concerns. Google has been attacked over the last 20 years. Every day, a new lawsuit. 2012, uh, antitrust issues in Europe. Similarly, Microsoft, you, you, the EU, EU has been fining it every year probably, and there will be more and more fines. However, what is the key? The key is that the European Union prosecutor is probably using Google to do his searches where to bring the other prosecutors to lunch. They're probably using Microsoft to type their, their thesis, and they're probably using Facebook to communicate to their mistresses, sorry, wives. So the key is what the users will be using, no matter what is going on with the politics, with the news. And therefore, my story with Facebook is unchanged over the last six months. There will be probably some higher costs, but unlinearity is normal. And now we are giving you the new story with Yao Kai that will talk about corporate, corporate culture, but first about the employees and the programming, and then we'll finish together with what are the re possible risks, as investing is always about risk and reward. So Yao Kai, the word is for you. Hi, uh, so yes, yeah, so we'll start with the, uh perspective from a, a programmer's side. So uh, programmers are also more fancy known as software engineers, but we're just programmers. Um, we want to work with other smart people. We want to get paid a lot. So Facebook provides both of that. And um, in fact, 
together with Google, they are the two top employee employer choices here in the Bay Area because um, you get paid a lot, and then the the quality of engineers they have is uh, is has a reputation of being highest. So they can tr continue to attract top talent, and that is very, very important for any tech company. You want that top talent. Uh, so that's one thing. The th second thing is, um, I think Facebook is, is uh, either one of the first or the first big company to adopt what's known as a growth hacking um, methodology. So growth hacking now is- you're, Now you're talking about the- The corporate culture. Corporate culture, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so growth hacking is a name that was given to a uh, almost like a philosophy of how one should develop products. Um, so some uh, pillars are cross-functional teams. So in the same team, they're typically small. You get a product uh, manager, you get a designer, you get a lead um, uh lead engineer and then as some kind of data analyst and they are physically close together they constantly communicate and that's very different from what business used to be um, built it used to be you have a design department then you have a engineering department and you have some kind of product management development uh, department and then it's almost like a hiring uh, situation where the the top of the hierarchy decide what to build, the product guys decide uh, what, how to prioritize, and then they give it to the design people, the design people comes up with a thing, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. that flows down to the engineers. There's no background, backward and forwards. So that's one difference. And the other one is extremely high frequency of experiments. So these growth teams, the way they do things is completely data driven. They want to, they, they form hypotheses. They come up with ways to, uh, to validate these hypotheses. And if this sticks, it goes in, it stays there in the product. If it doesn't, then it, it gets thrown out. Most of the time the, the idea is a bad idea. So that's um, uh, how they're dealing with it. And then, and you can see how this doesn't work for a traditional company because the turnaround is a quarter. You have quarterly planning meetings, right? If you run an experiment in a quarter, well, give you 20 quarters, your company's probably already dead. So, so that's a very different um, way of dealing with things and it has shown up in the way they grow. It's completely insane. They were able to grow something so big, still pretty fast with different products and everything. And within them, um, the competition they even have competition within their own uh, products. So the Facebook main platform is competing against Instagram and Messenger and WhatsApp. So basically, they are cannibalizing their own thing instead of letting other people cannibalize their market, which is a tough call, but long term, it's going to be a much better position than sitting there, sitting on your laurels and let other people take your lunch. I'd rather take my own lunch, really. And what I have seen just from a user experience, I started a Facebook page for what I do, I think, uh, six months ago or something like that. And actually, the software was crap when compared to YouTube. Uh, this week, they introduced uh, Creator Studio for Creators, the monetization equal to YouTube, everything, data, yeah. everything. So they're really going after YouTube on the video side, also on Facebook, Instagram, IGTV, everything. So, and this is very interesting how they test everything because then as investors, we know, okay, everything that goes on in Facebook is not some crazy CEO like Chipotle that comes in and, no. oh, we are going to do this, market it over across the whole country. And then if it blows, it blows, who cares? But everything is really tested first on small samples, if it works, bigger sample. And so they are not going to do anything that screws up the company, which a lot of people are thinking, oh, if they put too many ads or something like that. No, everything is really measured. Clear. Everything's measured. No, they are not taking chances. And then that's the difference between Facebook and Snapchat. If you look at Snapchat, they did that redesign, like out of the blue, and everybody hated it. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. It will. 
it, I mean, Facebook had redesigns. People complained about it, but people stayed on. That's a difference. So yeah, yeah, yeah. probably did not measure, Facebook probably did not measure how many people complained about the new design. They probably uh, measured how many people left it because of the new design, how many people, you know, how, how does that change the total number of minutes or something like that on their platform. But Snapchat, when they did that, they actually lost users. Yeah, because so, they made a new design and then what's this just out of the blue to everybody, which is right. not logical. But okay, Snapchat is a different story. In any case, what else about the culture, the data-driven, where is the power of Facebook lying there? Because it's a methodology, so it's, it's a method. It doesn't depend, obviously they need a person to give them general direction. So Zuckerberg is probably still has to do something, right? It's like, we need to do this area, but the having a methodology enables, gives a structure for people to, um, move a lot faster. If they test 17 new ideas every week per growth team on average, right? And you as a, you know, some older, some, some, um, uh, like old tech guard that has quarterly releases, how, how, how are you going to compete? You don't even have the enough material to do that, to get the same data as them. Obviously, this growth hacking thing, this experimentation thing is uh, getting wider and wider adoption. So newer companies like Airbnb and stuff, they also, they also do this, um, which is partly why Airbnb grows so fast. Um, it could be that. So, and, and just on a side, I mean, the, I'm, doing a, uh, I'm joining a startup, and then what we want to do is bring this to... China. In China, this isn't fully appreciated yet. So there's, there's a language gap. Is the, the barrier is actually pretty, pretty uh, um, hefty. So in China, that's not widely that may, that may give us an edge as well. Okay. We're trying to copy what Facebook does. <laughs> and this corporate culture, plus we have seen the big cash flows because they are printing money. What, just your views are, as a specialist, what about the new technologies and the new things they are working on, implementing, testing, VR, AR, all those kind of yeah, things? Yeah, so those are, those are moonshots. So it's very hard to, to, to gauge um, the, the uh, potential because at the moment, we're still at the stage where VR is hardware constrained. And there's nothing much you can do about that uh, other than wait for the hardware to catch up. Right? So the reason it's hardware constrained, the, you say, oh, VR is such a small screen, I have, I have no problem with my, my TV or my monitor because your monitor has lower resolution than the VR screen. A VR screen so close to your eye, you see the pixels. If you see the pixels too long, you get dizzy. And then when you turn your head, you, the VR thing has to follow your head, right? It points to a particular place. Now, if the lag is anything more than, I think it was seven milliseconds or something, you get dizzy. It's just a human thing. It, and that means every time you do anything, the response has to come back within seven milliseconds. How does that achieve? Yeah, you can optimize it in software in some what, but the main thing is gonna come with hardware. Also, the thing is still too heavy. You got a ginormous stuff on your head, which tires your neck. Um, so there's a lot of things that still has to happen before but, there is a, um, becomes like a wide adopt, like widespread use. So it, it's so plenty can, of years to go. We can say, but at the price earnings ratio of 20, who cares? Oh, I'm not even, my long thesis doesn't even involve VR for, okay. for, this thing. So let's finish with the risks. So my main risk is uh, over the long term, as we see how they test everything, I don't think they will do something to screw up, to lose uh, customers because the network, as long, the longer it is there, it, the stronger it gets there. And there are WhatsApp, everything. The biggest risk from a stock market perspective is always a recession, simply when there is a recession, ads get cut. So unlinearity in the revenue, lower growth, lower everything, Wall Street 
analyst will project it differently and then you will have a much lower valuation which is what i'm waiting for so yeah. if there is a recession facebook will go down because that's the nature of the business and then we might pick it up at a bigger opportunity any risks to add yeah okay so um there is also the regulatory risk i mean there's it's not as bad as most people make it out is i think the risk is okay there's going to be some regulation on security and user privacy what now the users don't even care that much but the politicians when they get it um they they will probably come up with something to regulate them so that will add some cost but this thing is actually a blessing in disguise now if the social media were to be regulated by governments to have certain guards like security guards to protect the user information that means cost fixed cost right it, unless you do it with humans if you do it with code the cost of writing something to protect one person is the same as the cost of protecting things against you know for 10 million people so that's going to be bad for any startups so it's going to make a startup come up to take their lunch much less likely because suddenly their capital requirement goes up you now need to hire you know five guys which costs you 2 million dollars a year uh total to for a whole year or two just to make sure that you you comply with the regulation same thing happened with gdpr i i had the first hand experience gdpr had a huge impact in my company we had to do a lot of things to cover for that but we had the revenue we had lots of revenue we can do that we can put the people on it if you're a startup you end up not being able to operate in europe as simple as that so this is something that i think yes it's going to add cost but long term it will become part of their moat which is why pharmaceuticals are so profitable because regulation is so heavy um and the other thing is just you know people get envious like the chinese which don't even allow facebook and then maybe the uh, europeans are like uh you give me half of our citizens we're not getting a cut out of it or something they get envious Yes, and they take some. I think those are, with all that in mind, I'm still very much long Facebook. But uh, to concur, to like echo your point, yeah, it's a pro-cyclical company. It's not a counter-cyclical company, like a bankruptcy lawyer or something. Uh, this thing's revenue is going to decline probably faster than other industries because people will cut. Uh, Spending. percentage of probably ad spending yeah not just uh, revenue will go down but the percentage would of the ad in terms of revenue would go down as well so they'll get like double hit yeah. but then it's going to because they have very little fixed cost right that's it's going to be a great time to be uh, buying facebook i own so, four shares at the moment <laughs> <laughs> so in any case uh, we'll just um, be watching like this and i'll make we'll make a video update every six months because there is no need to talk about facebook every two days because not nothing much has changed after the earnings we'll see what's new and uh, then simply update it of the, over the long term and uh, when we go big we we'll let uh, our viewers know all right thank you Yaokai, for joining us today As thank always, you please uh, check the yaokai's invest with jyk uh, youtube channel always if you want a tech technical investment analysis very in-depth analysis on very a lot of stocks uh, a lot of uh, bad mounting about some new chinese ipos that you might want to short always check yaokai's <laughs> channel <laughs> I might get into trouble back in China with all my bashing of Chinese IPOs, but okay. We'll but see. you, uh, you can always get out because YouTube is not allowed in China. So how can they know that you are bashing them? They can't, right? Well, <laughs> <laughs> just joking. But okay. Well, 
thank you everybody for watching. If you have any special request of a stock that you might want us to see discussing from our backgrounds, please let us know in the comments. Thank you. Bye. Bye.